The mysterious group known as Leviathan is gunning for super agencies from all over the world. Is anyone safe? Can Superman stop them? Well, let's hop into the pages of Action Comics number 1008 and find out for ourselves, shall we? Alrighty then, so as we join the comic, we check on in with the DEO and their leader, Mr. Bones. And wow, holy crap, Brian Michael Bendis was actually aware of something that was going on in the Supergirl book. It means he actually read something? The devil is surely having a snowball fight right now. With Super Supergirl off-world again, some continuity in a Bendis book, do wonders never cease, Mr. Bones is auditioning some new replacements. Number one on his list is Adam Strange, and man, I would totally read a Men in Black style DEO book starring Adam Strange, but that might not happen because the DEO comes under attack by Leviathan. No one is actually able to make out who or what was responsible for the attack, but what we know is that they're incredibly powerful. Luckily, Adam Strange was there and able to escort everyone important with a name from the DEO to safety with the help of his jetpack. Now, picking up from where the last issue left off too, Amanda Waller is still on the run after Task Force X went missing and her own offices came under attack. Seeing as she also seems to be a top brass member of Argus with her fingers in a lot of pie, she decides to take a very dangerous public meeting with General Sam Lane, who, following the revelation from the previous issue that his daughter is married to Superman, he's been drinking himself into oblivion, but also coming to some realizations that maybe he's been too hard on the superhero community. Basically, he's now the living embodiment of that old saying, you can feel one way on an issue until that issue starts tumbling through your door. Waller's pretty paranoid, which is par for the course. She feels that someone or something is trying to do a full, clean sweep of all the super organizations, and that no one may actually be in a proper position to stop it. It's at this point, too, both Waller and Lane realize that neither of them called this meeting, which means this is once again and another trap by Leviathan. Now what's Superman doing right now? Well, him and Lois figure they better get to the Daily Planet and blow the lid off this giant super conspiracy as soon as they possibly can. Yeah, they're back working together and on friendly terms. Despite the fact that they're not living together anymore. Indeed, everyone at the paper is pretty shocked to see Lois Lane return too because they thought she was gone forever. It's Jimmy though who's probably the most excited to see her back. After all, he saw the Cobra Cult get nuked in the previous issue, and now he's unsure how far this conspiracy goes, but he knows he can always trust Lois. Now, back over with Waller and Lane, they just narrowly managed to survive the building they were in falling on top of them. Luckily, Argus Tech gives them personal shields to protect themselves. Unfortunately, this is just the beginning, and the same strange shadowy figure that blew up the DEO is seen in the distance here. What does Waller do? Well, the most Waller move in history. I don't have to outrun the Leviathan monster, all I have to do is shoot Sam Lane in the legs and have the monster eat him while I run away. Seriously, this is why I love this character. She is so morally reprehensible and self-serving. It is, though, where Waller runs off to that is perhaps the most interesting. With her back against the wall, no one to trust, and a threat that she doesn't fully understand, she figures the only person who can help her is, well, Superman, which she is well aware is Clark Kent. How does Waller know Clark Kent is Superman? Because she's the wall, and the wall knows all. And so that was Action Comics number 1008, everybody, part two of the Leviathan storyline, and I gotta say, after a lot of sweaty, uncomfortable fumbling in the first couple arcs here from Bendis, I think he might actually have found his footing. This is a story that once again plays to Bendis' unique strengths very well. It's all secret societies, all smoky back rooms. Hard-nosed journalist trying to crack a case at all costs. And a mystery threat that actually seems fairly mysterious and fairly interesting. Yeah, overall, I liked this one quite a bit. I would give this a 7.5 out of 10. <clears throat> Hey there everyone, it's your old pal Cave Joel again, and I want to thank you so much for watching to the end of the video. I hope you enjoyed it, and if you did, why not check out some of these other videos I have available from the channel. Then you can follow me on Twitter and Facebook at Cave Joel, so you're always up to speed on what I'm doing next. And hey, if you really like what I do, you might want to pick up a Cape Joel shirt. Yes, that's right, I have my own merch store over at Tee Public. Check out for great designs like my little Cape Man, stuff from the comic multiverse, fun stickers, in-jokes, we got it all over at the Tee public store. You can check it out right now, and I will be sure to see you all again next time. Bye-bye.